Welcome back to my channel for a Hasselblad episode where a lot of people in my recent video on the new Hasselblad 907X CFV100C asked for in the comment section. And what I'm going to do in this video is I will remove from the 907X camera body the CFV100C digital back and mount it on a legacy film roll camera for medium format film to the Hasselblad 503CW. Let's get right into the topic. All right, let's do some housekeeping first. So the Hasselblad 500 series is a legendary medium format camera system. This one here is the 503CW. It has a film roll back mounted on the back end of the camera here. And uh, I've done a comprehensive tutorial on how to use this camera with all the elements on it, all the mechanical elements you see here and I will post the link down below in the info box so you can look this up because this video will be a bit quicker. I will not again go 10 to 15 minutes through all the functions of this analog film camera for medium format. The lens I have mounted for this shooting is a macro lens. And if you look here, you see this is a macro planar lens. It's from car size. It's a T-star lens, so high optical qualities. We have widest open and F4 and it's a 120 millimeter lens calculated for medium format film. And uh, what I wanna shoot in this video is another legendary Hasselblad camera, namely this beauty here. And we'll use the macro lens on the 503CW to set this camera in scene here. And I will show you two different ways how you can shoot the digital back CFV100C on this legacy film camera in order to get nice pictures of this beauty here, the 500 ELM made in Sweden by Viktor Hasselblad. Okay, so if we go back to this camera here, I wanna remove the film roll back here, but that doesn't work because there is a dark slide here and I refer again to my tutorial in the other video I just mentioned, and I need to get the dark slide in here. Then the film, the virtual film, which is not in here, imaginary film, I should say, is protected. And now I can remove that film roll back. And uh, I will do the same now for the digital back here on the Hasselblad 907X camera body. I push that lever, I remove the digital back. And if we compare these two backs here, they are quite comparable in size. The difference is, here is the dark slide, that here we would expose medium format film. And here we have a 100 megapixel digital sensor, which will be exposed to light and then gives us later, hopefully, a fine image. Now I can mount this very quickly on that film roll camera body and uh, I recommend to do this gentle. And then it looks like this. And by the way, here we already have now a very nice digital back camera body lens combination, which is a wonderful blend of something legacy, something from decades back and something very modern, which just came to market, namely the CFV100C with a 100 megapixel medium format sensor. And that is just gorgeous. Isn't it? Now here, of course, the lens on the 907X camera body is fully exposed. So I recommend actually to cover this up and close the camera body, which is simple. You just clip that plate on here. And I showed this V from Victor Hasselblad in the previous video, my first introductory video on the new 907X CFV100C. Now the lens is protected from behind and on the front side, we have the lens cap and I can put this aside and can turn my attention completely to this lens camera body digital back combination here and show you how to operate and shoot it. Before I now go into a live demonstration on how to shoot this camera in two different ways, for very nice images, let me make one more remark for the not so experienced viewers who actually watch this video. And uh, what I wanna say here is that if you wanna remove that lens, so I mounted this macro lens, there was a different lens mounted before, I cannot do it, it's locked here. And the reason is that the lens currently is not cocked. And uh, in order to cock the lens, I have to wind here the camera body and now the lens is cocked, I can fire it. We see this later again. But now it is cocked, I do not fire it, and now I can remove the lens. That's really to bear in mind. You see here, now the lens is removed, and uh, that's actually the way to change lenses on these type of camera bodies. Now the good thing is, in the same way as I showed many times on my channel, on Hasselblad lenses, on the X system, on the V system, this marking is always at 12 o'clock, so I don't need to be ingenious. I can just put it on here with the marker at 12 o'clock. It will fit, I can turn it on, it snaps in 
and then it's ready to shoot as you see here. I will now provide a live demonstration step by step how to shoot this camera system in two different ways as I said and then I also want to show sample images in Lightroom of this beauty here shot with that combination of digital back camera body and lens and uh, shot in two different ways and in Lightroom we'll see that the image quality is absolutely terrific and fantastic and one of the questions which came in the comments under my introductory video to the new 907X CFV100C was whether these legacy lenses, decades old, they are still sharp enough, good enough from their optical properties to be shot with a 100 megapixel digital back. And the answer to that clearly is yes. Don't be concerned about the optical quality of these lenses. They will just do the trick. So first of all, we need to wind here. Then the lens is cocked and the camera body is ready to shoot. There is a shutter button here. Let's push it. What a sound. Let's do this again because it sounds so beautiful in my ears. Very good. Now what I will do is I will shoot at slower shutter speed for my macro shooting. And uh, for that I have a remote shutter control. And uh, that one works for Mamiya, but it also works for Hasselblad. It's the same mount here. You have to just screw it into the shutter button, which is a bit complicated with one hand since I'm filming, but then it's done. And uh, the remote control looks like this. We wind the camera, the lens is cocked, and then I can shoot and fire the leaf shutter in the lens. You see, simple like that and no shakes by my finger here on the camera body. Let's do this again. And you see, I don't have to touch because I have my control via the remote control. I don't have to touch the camera body. And that's exactly what I want for my shooting here. Let's now look into how to operate this macro lens here. And first of all, we have here a focus control ring and that one is buttery smooth, but has significant resistance. You need considerable force to turn it. And that's actually exactly what you need for precise focusing of a macro lens. And uh, of course I like that. Then we have here a shutter speed control ring and I can go here as fast as one over 500 seconds. You see the 500 lines up with the bold dash now here. And uh, that is the fastest I can go here. And I can go as slow as one second. And then I have a bulb mode. And I also have a green F mode. And the green F stands for focal plane shutter. And if I switch into that mode by pushing the green button and turning it into F, now the F is aligned with the bold dash here. Then I can control my shutter speed on the digital back instead of controlling it via that ring here. And that's what I will do later when I shoot with electronic shutter on the CFV 100C. For the time being, I will very likely shoot with one over four seconds, which is very slow. That's why I also want to get my hands off the camera body and use that remote control I showed before. And in this way, having no touch on the camera body, but just using the remote control to fire the leaf shutter in the lens. The last control ring I have here is actually my aperture control. And this is widest open F4. And then we have F5 and so on. I can stop this down all the way to F32, which I do not recommend. And listen to the beautiful clicks here. The mechanics of these lenses are just absolutely gorgeous and I love a lot shooting these lenses. For my macro shooting, I will leave the settings on the lens as they are here when I shoot mechanically via the leaf shutter in the lens. So we are talking about an f5.6 and one over four seconds. And since there are no electronic contacts between the lens and the camera body and then into the digital back, I need to remember that because if I care about metadata, this is the point in time to take a piece of paper and write it down because I will later not be able to recognize what aperture I used and what shutter speed. So one over four seconds, f5.6, that's my parameter set for shooting with the leaf shutter in the lens. On the Hasselblad 500 series, we typically have very nice viewfinders, optical of course, and for waist level shooting. And in order to open this up, I just pull it and then it opens. Let me just quickly cock the lens by winding here. And then you see the live view. And uh, here you can now nicely focus. So this is out of focus. This gets more into focus and so on. So you can nicely focus here with that precise control ring for the focus. And you also have a magnifying glass, which I can pop up, but then you won't see any longer what's going on here because that is very hard to film through it. So let me do it. Here's the magnifying glass. At least you see it a little bit. Here's the Hasselblad camera body. And that magnifier helps a lot if you focus here 
via the optical waist level viewfinder. What I can say is that in bright daylight, this is of course absolutely superior to an LCD display on the back of a digital camera because you get a very bright representation of the scene in front of the camera. So that is something I like a lot. If you look into that, if you do it with your eye, you will very quickly enjoy that magnifier and the beauty of focusing via these type of viewfinders here. If I want to shoot via the mechanical leaf shot and the lens, I have to make the setting here for the camera body. So I go into the menu and then there is camera body. And here I have now all kinds of options. You can go for these type of cameras for the general 500 Hasselblad series setting. I can also go here more specifically for the 503 plus winder CW. And then later we'll use here any, which is the electronic shutter. And then we'll put the lens into focal plane shutter mode via that green button and green setting as I showed it before. So that's the way it works. But for the time being, we go into 503 plus winder. And then if I go back here, I can actually already shoot the camera. So let's wind it and listen to the sound. Oh, it's already wound, so I don't have to do that. Let's get the mechanical shutter release here and let's push the button. And then we get an image. Now, I have not focused yet, so let's see how this image looks like, but from a first glimpse on the image, it looks not overly bad. You see the structure of the Hasselblad camera body here by double push. I don't think everything is sharp here already, but it looks already quite nice. And uh, I think we will now get this sharp focusing. We had a focus ring, as I mentioned before. I will use the magnifying glass in the optical viewfinder, and then we take another shot. And then I think we have our first nice image of that beautiful Hasselblad moon camera here in gray in front of me in the scene. I've now focused via the optical viewfinder. Let's cock the lens by winding. Let's get the remote control here and let's shoot that beautiful lens and let's have a look at the image. So that's it. I will show it later in Lightroom to give you a closer look to it, but that looks pretty sharp to me. Look at that, all the engravings and these old Hasselblad lenses, they are so nice still in the colors they transport towards the film or the sensor, the sharpness they deliver. And we are talking about a 100 megapixel resolution here, but let's not praise the day before the evening. Let's look into Lightroom later on and let's have a detailed look at that image. As an alternative, of shooting with the leaf shutter in the lens, I can use the electronic shutter in the CFV 100C. And for this, I have to make a few adjustments here. So I go back into camera body and then in camera body, we now go here to any, which is electronic shutter. I missed it. Swiping, here we go, any electronic shutter. I'm also here now in manual mode, so I can control now my ISO value here. I keep it at 100. I'm currently at one over eight seconds. I want to set this to the same parameters as what I did in the mechanical shooting, one over four. And uh, what I also need to do is on the lens, I need to switch into the green F mode, which is something I'm doing now. So let me quickly do that on the shutter speed control ring. Now I'm in green F. And the last thing I have to do is I have to cock the lens and wind the camera body, but I will not shoot with the leaf shutter, but use a little button here and that button here is actually a mirror up button. Let's push this. And now if I go here into live view, I will actually see a live view of the scene in front of me. And you also see that the focus peaking kicked in and you saw that my focusing via the optical viewfinder was quite precise because that magenta color sits exactly where the focus is supposed to sit. And now I can take via that button here via the electronic shutter another image. Let's do this. Here we go. Then we go to play. And then now here, of course, I have all my parameters. I do not have the F stop because the F number is set to F 5.6, as I said before, manually, mechanically on the lens via the aperture control ring. But I see that I have chosen here one over four seconds and an ISO of 100, I will see anyway. So the shutter speed is the additional information I get here when I shoot with electronic shutter. Let's go once more. Let's go back here. Let's go into live view. As I said, if I would have a different scene, I could refocus now. Let's uh, keep everything as is. I don't have to wind again because the shooting works exclusively by the electronic shutter. I just need to make sure the mirror is pushed up so the digital back can actually look through the camera body and the light from the scene in front of me can fall onto the sensor. So let's take another shot. 
here we go. And that works like a charm. And these are the two alternatives you have if you want to shoot that camera digital back lens combination. You can go for electronic shutter and put the lens into the green F mode for focal plane shutter. Or you can go and shoot via the leaf shutter in the lens, which I recommend if you have moving subjects in the scene because the electronic shutter on these Hasselblad sensors typically have some rolling shutter effects which will distort moving subjects in the scene. And uh, if you shoot via leaf shutter, you have 1 over 500 seconds as the fastest shutter speed and that should actually help to freeze moving subjects. Okay, so let's quickly have a look into the images. And uh, I used two methods to shoot these images. One was with the leaf shutter in the lens and the other one was with the electronic shutter on the digital back. And this is the one which was shot with the leaf shutter in the lens. And first of all, it looks like a very clear and crisp image. It looks good to me. And by the way, also the coloring comes across quite nicely. And I have not manipulated these images in any way. These are really images which you are going to see now, which are out of camera images. No post-processing as you can see here in Lightroom, no sliders moved, nothing touched. If I shoot images with the leaf shutter in the lens, then the shutter speed is actually set on the lens and the digital back does not know the shutter speed because as I mentioned before, there is no wired connection between the lens and the digital back through the camera body. And that's the reason why here we only see the parameter ISO 100, which is what the digital back knows of course, because that's something I manipulate directly on the digital back. But shutter speed, not known, aperture anyway not known because it's also set on the lens. In contrast to the second image, which was shot via the electronic shutter, and then the digital back does not only know that this is an ISO of 100, but also the shutter speed I set for the electronic shutter on the digital back, which here, if you remember, was one over four seconds. So that is also something which is evidenced here in the metadata in the images. Let's crop in now to 100% and let's have a look at the sharpness and the details. And this looks really, really good. You see here Hasselblad, 1962 to 1982, 20 years in space and so on. This is all super sharp and super crisp. And as I said, I didn't touch any slider, no sharpness enhanced, no nothing. No voodoo going on here. This is just an out of camera image. And the macro lens I was using for that shooting is really capable of resolving the 100 megapixel resolution of this new CFV 100C sensor. And also on the lens here, it looks really good. We have a very shallow depth of field. If I go here to the tripod, you see very quickly, if you move away a little bit from the plane where the focus was sitting, it becomes fuzzy. And by the way, the transition between sharp areas and blurriness in the background is very smooth, buttery smooth, looks really, really good. So I can actually see here clear evidence that if you combine legacy Hasselblad lenses with a legacy film roll camera body with that CFV 100C, that super modern, super new digital back, you can create fantastic images if you know how to do it. And that's what this video was all about, to provide a little tutorial how to combine these two and actually get nice shootings done. The story continues if we go to the second image, which was the one shot with electronic shutter, which is also evidenced here in the metadata. Again, we see here one over four seconds, ISO 100. Aperture, I had to remember, was selected on the lens f5.6. And here we have the same sharpness, the same crispiness, the same beautiful transition between sharp areas and blurriness in the background. I've now put these two images side by side. On the left hand side, the one shot with the leaf shutter in the lens. On the right hand side, the one shot with the electronic shutter on the digital back. And these images are the same. There is no difference in the level of sharpness here if you go for electronic shutter only, and in this case have no mechanical elements or pieces moving. And uh, if you use a cable remote control like I did for my leaf shutter shooting, then you actually will have a very sharp, very crisp image. There's no problem using the leaf shutter in the lens. Of course, you can go for electronic shutter if you want, but remember what I said before, if you have moving subjects in the scene, you will actually have some rolling shutter effects because the Hasselblad 50C and 100C sensors, their readout time is not super fast. And if you have, for instance, a train passing by quickly, that train will be distorted to some extent. All right, I hope you enjoyed that video. At least it was requested by a lot of people. And I hope the way I demonstrated how to actually use this digital back here the CFV 100C on the 500 series Hasselblad film roll camera was useful for you. If you liked that video, don't forget to drop me a thumbs up. Stay tuned on my channel. There's always more to come. Thanks for watching. Stay safe and healthy. And of course, peace out.